Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Sultai colored Graveyard deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring both Muldrotha the Gravetide as her commander, as well as Giruda Doom of Depths as her companion, and Historic Brawl decks can indeed feature both, as long as her companion is the right colors and we can meet its requirements. In this case, our starting deck can only contain cards with even mana values, so our deck is filled with 2 drops, 4 drops, 6 drops, even got a couple 8 and 10 drops to top off our curve and then we have to pay the three mana to move Giruda from the companion zone to our hand and then we can cast it for six mana as a 6-6 six, six demon kraken that when it enters the battlefield each player mills four cards we get to put a creature card with an even mana value from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under our control so for the most part it's going to be a creature from our graveyard every now and then the opponent might mill something better we want to get instead and then Giruda has excellent synergy with Muldrotha, because by milling the top 4 cards of our library, we fill the graveyard for Muldrotha, the 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary elemental avatar we can simply cast out of the command zone, and it says during each of our turns we may play a land and cast a permanent spell of each permanent type from our graveyard. So permanent types include creature, artifact, enchantment, even planeswalker, even if our deck doesn't feature any, so those are all card types we can replay out of the graveyard, including including a land as well, so Muldrotha can generate a ton of advantage, including potentially replaying Giruda if it ended up in our graveyard, so we can replay that as well, generate more value, fill the graveyard even more, so the two have excellent synergy with each other. Now I've split up the deck into a few different categories to make it easier to go over all the different cards, starting out with the mana acceleration, which is very much necessary when trying to cast all these expensive cards. So at 2 mana there's Dawn Treader Elk, can be sacrificed to find a basic land, so also plays well with Muldrotha so we can replay it out of the graveyard. We've got both Explorer and Grow Spiral to play an extra land and draw card. We've got some more traditional ramp creatures like Incubation Druid, we've got Paradise Druids, Tangled Florahedron can also be played as a land, and then some multicolor ramp creatures like Skull Prophet can also tap to mill two cards to maybe fill the graveyard, Merleaf Pixie, a 2-2 flyer that can make blue or green, and the Root Coil Creeper can also make one man of any color, as well as the Ornithopter of Paradise, an 0-2 artifact creature, so we can replay the Ornithopter out of the graveyard as both an artifact or a creature, so if we replay it as an artifact we can still play a different creature out of the graveyard, which is also an important distinction with Muldrotha. Then we've got some more ramp with Into the North, finding a snow land to put on the battlefield tapped, and we've got a cycle of tapped snow dual lands to search up. Lotus Cobra makes mana whenever land enters, so plays well with fetch lands and other ramp cards that put additional lands in play. And then Wolf Follow Haven, an enchantment, that can also be replayed with Muldrotha, as we can sacrifice it to make a 2-2 wolf token, otherwise the enchanted land adds additional green mana. And then we've got the 4 2 mana ramp artifacts that have featured in pretty much every Brawl deck recently Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. The last one here, especially quite synergistic with Muldrotha, as we can sacrifice it to draw a card and then replay it. Then at 4 mana, there's even more ramp, with Solemn finding a land when it enters and drawing a card when it dies. Key to the Archive makes 2 mana and then also lets us draft a card from the powerful 15 card spellbook. We've got Hedron Archive, can also be sacrificed to draw two cards, otherwise makes two mana. Then a Titan's Nest, an enchantment that at the beginning of our upkeep can look at the top card of our library and decide to put it into our graveyard. And we can exile a card from our graveyard to add colorless mana to cast spells that have one or more colors, so we can use our graveyard as a resource. And then Quandrix Cultivator enters to find a forest or an island. Oracle of Moldaya lets us play an additional land each turn, can also play lands of the top to provide card advantage. And Kiora can also use the plus one to untap one of our lands potentially, so that's another way of ramping after floating our mana, and can also potentially conjure Kraken Hatchlings, so that's one way to cheat the system to still get some one drops into our deck despite Giruda's restriction, and then we can turn those Hatchlings into 8-8 Krakens as well. And then the next category of cards are the clone effects, which are particularly synergistic with Giruda, because if we mill the top four cards, find one of our clone effects, copy Giruda, we get to mill the top four cards once again, putting more stuff into our graveyard, until we can maybe eventually find another expensive creature to put in play. 
So we've got the Mirror Hall Mimic, enters a battlefield as a copy of any creature, and then we can also disturb it out of the graveyard, in which case it turns into a powerful enchantment aura that can maybe copy an opposing creature as well. We've got Spark Double, which ignores the legendary rule, so that's one way to have two Girudas in play at the same time. Thassa doesn't really clone a creature, but flickers a creature each turn, so that's another way to re-trigger Giruda's Enter the Battlefield ability, and our deck is filled with creatures that have sweet ETB effects, so Thassa's quite powerful. And then Vizier of Many Faces also enters as a copy, and can also embalm it out of our graveyard for 5 mana to copy a creature once again. Then the next category of cards are ways to fill the graveyard and other value cards, including Mire Triton, a 2-1 with Death Touch. When it enters, we mill the top two cards and gain two. We've got the Binding of the Titans as an enchantment saga, which also have great synergy with Moldrotha, because at the end of the third chapter we sacrifice it, so we can replay the enchantment out of our graveyard with Moldrotha. And then it also mills the top three cards, potentially gets back a creature or land from our graveyard. Then Gonti a 2-3 with Death Touch, that can take a card from the opponent's top 4 when it enters. The Oracle of Half-Truths will reveal the top 3 cards to our opponent, they get to separate it into two piles. One of them we can choose to put into our hand, the other one goes into our graveyard. And then Panharmonicon can double the Enter the Battlefield triggers of artifacts and creatures we control. And Old Stick Fingers can also enter the battlefield and put a number of creatures into our graveyard, so we can eventually replay them. Now we could play even more effects that fill our graveyard, think of cards like Mulch, Grizzly Salvage, Winding Way, which can potentially mill a few cards and find a creature or land to put into our hand, so those are cards you could consider as well to power up Muldrotha. Then the next category of cards is Interaction, ways to interact with the opponent's game plan. We've got Hermit, can be sacrificed to counter non-creature spells, also great to replay. We've got Acquisitions Expert and Elder Fang Disciple making the opponent discard when they enter. Myers Grasp gives an opposing creature minus 3 minus 3, so when it goes to the graveyard we can replay the enchantment with Muldrotha to kill another small creature once again. Masked Vandal and Outland Liberator can destroy artifacts or enchantments. We've got Ravenous Chupacabra to destroy opposing creatures when it enters. Hostage Taker can exile an opposing creature or artifact that we can eventually play ourselves. Binding destroys a non-land permanent and eventually ramps us as well. And then the Meat Hook Massacre, a powerful legendary enchantment that can also wipe the board. And then the final category of cards are expensive creatures that we hope to hit with Giruda's Enter the Battlefield ability. So at 6 mana there's Dream Eater, which can bounce something. Also Surveils 4, which is another way of filling the graveyard. We've got Burning Rune Demon, which can find two cards. One of them ends up in our graveyard, one of them in our hand, and it's the opponent's choice. Demon Lord Belsonlock draws a bunch of cards when he enters. We've got the Lord of the Forsaken, which can potentially sacrifice smaller creatures to mill three cards, and then we can also pay life to add colorless mana that we can spend to cast cards out of our graveyard, so that can potentially help play a bunch of cards in the same turn with Muldrotha. We've got Noxious Gearhulk, an artifact creature, so we can potentially play it as an artifact and still play a creature out of our graveyard alongside it, and then can destroy an opposing creature, gaining life equal to its toughness. Massacre Worm gives opposing creatures minus two minus two. We've got Kogla, can fight an opposing creature when it enters, and can destroy artifacts or enchantments when it attacks. Dinrova Horror returns target permanent to its owner's hand, and then the player discards a card, so especially effective if the opponent is empty-handed. Psychic Symbiont makes the opponent discard and also draws a card for us on a 3-3 flyer. We've got Xenathar, which helps us play cards from the top of the opponent's library, so we can maybe keep them drawing lands over and over. And then Bookworm, a 7-7 Trampler, draws a card and gains 3 life when it enters. Vorinclex will double our mana while keeping the opponent's lands tapped down. Crater of Behemoth can give our team a massive boost to potentially end the game. And then Jingitaxius can also draw a ton of cards while making the opponents discard down to zero cards every turn as well. So very powerful if we can hit that off Giruda. And then a mana base, pretty straightforward, a ton of mana fixing. We've got the Snow Dual Lands to go with our Into the North. And then a Port of Carfell, a nice utility land, can be sacrificed to mill the top four cards and then return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So sometimes it can benefit us to let our commander go to the graveyard, sacrifice Port of Carfell, and then we can immediately replay the port thanks to Muldrotha, so we can keep replaying our commander without having to pay any commander tax. And then fetch lands, of course, also quite synergistic with Muldrotha, as we can easily replay them to generate a small advantage. And then cards like Field of Ruin and Ghost Quarter, also good at destroying opposing lands, then we can also replay those out of the graveyard. 
and uh, blast zone finally another removal spell built into our land as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play facing the first sliver so five color sliver tribal presumably my hand is missing green mana so can't actually cast explore i do like guardian idol but if i don't find green mana right away i could be in trouble so i might have to mulligan this all right this has potential lotus cobra plays well with fabled passage so we can maybe get something going So next turn, if Cobra survives, maybe play Thassa, or I could straight go for Giruda in hand. So I can maybe play it thanks to Fabled Passage. Hatris is also tempting. I think I still go for Giruda, just because the upside's so high if we get to combo off with it. Guardian Project's fine. Alright, time for Giruda. Fetch a Swamp. And see what we hit. Right, nothing too spectacular. But we do have a Thassa in hand to eventually flicker Giruda as well. And then we're not too far from a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Opponent plays their commander. Finding a bit of a blank here, Distant Melody, without any slivers in play. So probably one of the worst hits. Still draws from Project. Okay. So wants to play here. Can't quite play Crater Hoof yet. Moldrotha with Fabled Passage could also be interesting next turn. But um, yeah, I guess Hedron Archive plus Thassa is not bad. And then we can flicker Giruda. Try and find something else. Found Cultivator. Also enables Thassa. And nothing I can do with the floating mana. So we can block the first sliver with Thassa now. Alright, D Spark, clean answer to the indestructible god. But we can still maybe play Crater Hoof next turn. A Realm Walker on Sliver. Cascades into Thoughtseize. Ooh, that takes away the Crater Hoof. Although Muldrotha could still let us replay it. So next turn I might go for Muldrotha Fable Passage. Make some mana. Although we don't have many basic lands left in the deck. So I have to be a little bit mindful of that. Still doubt Sliver's attacking. Okay, so I'm gonna stick to the plan here. So, land. Fabled Passage. And then, how much mana are we working with? Five, six... So I could play like a Dinrova Horror to bounce something. I guess that's okay. Bounce the first sliver. And then I get to attack with Giruda, as well as the Cultivator. If we had one more mana, we could have played the Mindstone or Arcane Signet first, but opponent will have to discard as well. 
And then next turn, Muldrotha could replay Crater Hoof to potentially end the game. So, yeah, the game definitely got a lot easier once we combined Lotus Cobra with Fabled Passage. We'll see if the opponent can come back here. Don't expect them to have too many sweepers, but they can maybe hit a removal spell for Muldrotha. It's going to be the Cohort instead. Still draws with Guardian Project, so they might still have like a Source to Plowshares for one mana that they can draw into. It's going to be Enduring Sliver cascading into. Oof, they hit the swords. That's unfortunate, so that can exile Muldrotha. Prevent us from replaying Craterhoof, at least next turn. So yeah, they hit what they needed. If it was a Lightning Bolt, that would not have been good enough. Opponent actually exiles Giruda. Not sure if that's the correct play here, but I guess that does prevent us from ever getting it back from our graveyard. But we'll see if Craterhoof is lethal here. And then do I have enough mana for Atris first? Four, five, six, seven, eight, we should. Just to put an extra creature in play. And then cast a creature, Crater Hoof. And smash. All right, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Brokos, Apex of Forever, another Sultai deck. And my hand is not ideal, only one mana creature. So if that gets answered, we're pretty far behind. Alright, this is a little bit better. Guardian Idol, not as easy for the opponent to remove. And then... Penharmonicon could be fun if we eventually play Dream Eater and Giruda. And our mana base is pretty solid. And then we're hoping for more mana acceleration in the next couple turns. Could also just put Giruda in hand next turn, although wouldn't necessarily be able to cast it on turn 4. Right, into the north is excellent. Although if I into the north, then I cannot pay the three. So I'm still unable to play Giruda, although I could play Dream Eater, which is maybe good enough. So let's uh, still go for it, get one of our snow lands. Pass it back. The Barkai Troll, a safe target to mutate onto with Brokos. Alright, Uro for ramp. We don't get to play Uro because of our Giruda restriction. Otherwise it would definitely be in here. So now we have a decision. Do we want to play Dream Eater? Do we want to go for maybe Giruda or Panharmonicon instead? Key to the Archive. That's also tempting. So if I play key, then next turn I could put Giruda in hand and be able to uh, cast it already. I guess that's worth it. And then Doomblade could be something we can actually cast right away over Demonic Tutor, which of course is powerful, but there's nothing specific I need here. So I'll grab some interaction, discard maybe Ghost Quarter or maybe Panharmonicon, which might be a little slow. Could even go for Dream Eater. Because I want to play a land here and then next turn play a land and have three for Giruda, so 
can't really afford to discard land. So I guess I'll get rid of Panharmonicon, which is cheaper to eventually replay with Muldrotha. Keep up Doomblade. Can't Doomblade now because they could just give it Hexproof, but maybe if they tap out we can kill something else. And uh, yeah, next turn I might go for Giruda. Even if we don't have the Panharmonicon in play yet. Didn't quite have enough for Panharmonicon plus Dream Eater next turn. But I think this works out. So your opponent on taps. And if they tap out to mute it onto Barkai Troll, we can respond with Doomblade. They would still get their commander in play, but at least they don't get to hit us with it right away. It's going to be a Vine Mare instead. Hexproof cannot be blocked by black creatures, so pretty good. I guess we'll kill Troll while we can. And yeah, Vine Mare we won't be able to interact with as easily. Just gonna try and go over the top with Giruda. Ooh, wow. And we certainly hit one here with Jin Gitaxius. Thassa, powerful too. But I'm not gonna give up on a draw seven. And get rid of Temple, plus maybe a cheap creature we can replay out of the graveyard. So now they have to kill the core auger, otherwise they have to discard their hand. And then we can eventually replay Thassa out of the graveyard to flicker Giruda, get more value. Alright, counterparts, clones, the core auger, so they get to have their own draw seven. Although their hand size is still reduced to zero. So it's not actually as powerful as they would like it to be. And next turn we can answer the frog with maybe a Meat Hook Massacre or a Dream Eater bouncing it. So opponent gets to draw seven and then discard their hand. Okay. Well, I guess we want to deal with the frog. Meat Hook Massacre, probably the safest way to do so, and then we can also get rid of Vine Mare by playing it for X equals 3. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Gretchen, Blue Green, Ramp. And uh, yeah, we've got a pretty decent ramp hand ourselves. With maybe a turn to Root Coil Creeper, or we could go with a Gross Parrel. I think Creeper's fine in case we need black mana. Don't expect too much interaction out of blue green here. Okay. So I could play Solemn, or we could go exploring Solemn. Only ramps for one, whereas Explorer Gross Spiral could potentially ramp for two. So let's try that instead. Thassa could be excellent. And then I guess we'll uh, Gross Spiral here. Could do that at instant speed as well. There's no one drop I can draw. And then Creeper, I'm okay trading since I don't expect my opponent to. And we'll pass. Opponent could respect a two-mana counterspell. Goes for cultivates. Pretty good with a cobra in play. And yeah, next turn we could put Giruda in hand. Maybe play Solemn. We'll see. Cobra's gonna hang back. Did find a land. Can we find another? Spark double. Some one mana short of going solemn plus Giruda in hand. If I play Muldrotha, there's nothing to get back. So I think I'll just put Giruda in hand and uh, call it a day. And then next turn we can play it for six mana. Hope there's no counter spells. And our creeper has to survive. 
opponent potentially with six mana here. Activates Gretchen. Also plays well with Cobra, letting you play an additional land. Still four mana left. And Narsa to prevent card draw. That's alright. Don't need to draw cards here to do something powerful. So I'll play Giruda. And we only found a Skull Prophet, sadly. But we can try again with Thassa and Spark Double next turn. But our opponent does have access to a ton of mana. So a big blue sorcery could do some damage here. Alright, opponent passes with a whole bunch of mana up. So afraid of potential counter spells. Well, we can bait out with Spark Double and then try and resolve Thassa if this gets countered. That seems alright. And I hope Giruda doesn't get bounced as a Scatterworks. Try Thassa. Get syncopated. Giruda attacks Narset. So Syncopate actually exiled Thassa, meaning we wouldn't be able to get it back with Muldrotha. But Spark Double we can. Alright, so opponent's playing more counter spells than I initially anticipated, but it does make sense as Gretchen plays well with Author Instance, as you get to keep up all your mana. Narset's gonna go digging. Find Silundi Vision. Alrighty, so could even play for Inklex here, although don't necessarily expect it to resolve. If I play Muldrotha, I can replay a land out of my graveyard. And then I'm still one short of playing Spark Double. So maybe we do play Vorinclex. And then uh can still play Wolf Willow Haven afterwards. So this seems fine. Play Vorinclex. Opponent's gonna go digging for an answer. Finds Dryad's Revival. And they can activate Gretchen. Alright, does Vorinclex resolve? It does. Play Haven, hit for six. Narset down. They could revival it back, but that's most of their turn gone. They might want to get the Wilderness Reclamation actually, since that's pretty effective against Vorinclex. But we still get to double our mana here. Alright. Opponent still gets to untap. Okay, so what's next? Play Muldrotha, take it from there. Resolves. So I want to play a creature being Spark Double. Copy Giruda. Copying Vorinclex is also reasonable. Oh, we found a Kogla, which can fight. Gretchen eventually destroy the Wilderness Reclamation as well. Not sure if we found anything else useful to maybe replay with Muldrotha here. But yeah, we got there. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw, facing Chandra, Awakened Inferno, so kind of a rent control deck. So mana creatures are going to be in danger, Wolf Follow Haven, a safer way to ramp, and uh, this hand seems keepable. Turn one, have to decide between Temple and Chasm, because the uh, Scimitar comes into play untapped thanks to Chasm, otherwise we don't have an untapped land on turn two. So we'll go with Chasm into Cemetery. Steamkin, all right, that's a dangerous card. So I probably want to play Wolf Willow Haven. That's kind of a safer investment here over Druid, even though it's better to play Haven in a turn where we can tap it for mana right away. But against a red deck, it's probably not worth the risk. So let's just play Haven. And then next turn, get to go Glade plus Archive, although I still need to get this blue mana out there. Right, opponent stuck on two lanes at least. Could also put Giruda in hand, play a Temple of Mystery, is that better? I think I would still rather play Archive here. Small chance your opponent has an Abrade to destroy it. But it doesn't look like it. Right, buy Force instead to destroy it, that's too bad. So we take two. And then play Temple, try and find a land on top. Meat Hook Massacre is not bad, but I think I'd rather find a land. And then I can play Incubation Druid plus Expert. Probably beats putting Giruda in hand, although it's still a close decision. And we'll see what the opponent discards. Might have wanted to play Expert first, because this isn't a party type. Opponent gets rid of a Magic Missile. Opponent finds land number three. For Chandra and Rest to Kill, can make red mana right away. So if they have a one drop, they could even get a third counter on Steamkin. And keep going. But doesn't look like it. Alright, still worried about Steamkin, but I guess Dinrova Horror can bounce it, so is that the play? Dinrova Horror would be my entire turn gone, but at least I deny a big mana boost from Steamkin, which is probably worth it. And then we can attack Chandra. And then maybe next turn, get a Demon Lord down or put Giruda in hand. Want to wait till Muldroth until I can replay something out of the graveyard right away. So opponent's got five mana here. There's Injury in the Graveyard with Aftermath. And a Novice Pyromancer. Could minus two add double reds. Replay Steamkin. Alright. So, in total, have eight mana. If I adapt my Incubation Druids, then I still have five mana left, which I guess is enough for Giruda in hand plus play Pixie. And then we're less concerned about Chandra dealing three damage to each non-elemental. So let me start by attacking. And then send this at Novice Pyromancer, this at Dress to Kill perhaps. Opponent jumps in Rova Horror. Hey, listen, jerk. Move it. And then I'll stick to the plan. Adapt, making sure to leave blue and green. Play Pixie, put Giruda in hand. And then next turn we can play our companion. So our opponent could play their commander here. It's going to be a Fire Emancipation instead. Uh oh 
tripling all damage. So that also works with Chandra's plus one. Well, need to hit something pretty good with Giruda here. Do I want to play an Arcane Signet first? Three, four, five. I guess I wouldn't be able to play Demon Lord afterwards, one mana short. So I guess Signet first is fine. And what do we hit? Old Stick Fingers, not particularly exciting. Might still be better than a Root Coil Creeper. And then we can attack down some Planeswalkers. So they lost their mana engines, so they might be unable to play the Awakened Inferno. Chandra Spitfire is fine. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Turgrid, God of Fright. So potentially a discard deck. So it's going to be important for us to have an early start with a lot of mana acceleration so we can quickly empty our hand, develop our mana and then get value from our commander and companion. This hand sort of accomplishes that with a turn to Ornithopter, maybe into a turn 3 Kiora. So I'll try it. So wouldn't be able to play Skull Prophet onto Binding is okay, but it might be a little bit too reactive. If our opponent just plays a bunch of discard spells, it's going to be sitting on our hands. And uh, not something we necessarily want to play on curve. So I think I'm better off bottoming that for now. Acquisitions Experts has a look. Probably... Discard Skull Prophets, or I could go for land. Problem with discarding Skull Prophets is that I don't necessarily have a great play turn 3 if they kill Ornithopter, although I could always put Giruda in hand, I suppose. So maybe discarding Prophet is okay. Could also just get rid of Kogla, because it might be ambitious to actually play that, but... There's still a tiny chance we can ramp Kiora into Kogla. So if they make me discard two here, might get rid of Demon and the Lance. It's gonna be a Davriel. So Kogla doesn't have anything that we really want to fight at the moment. Although it could eventually deal with both Turgrid and the Lantern. So it's close between Kogla and Demon here. We're definitely playing Kiora next turn. I guess we'll get rid of uh, Demon. And then Kiora finding Kraken Hatchlings can also counteract the discard from our opponents. So that's nice. So now we can discard Kraken Hatchling. And then next turn I could technically play Kogla already. Liliana. <laughs> Ruining your Let day is going your brain. Great. So lots of planeswalkers that can make us discard, which makes Turgrid quite scary. Crater Hoof can go. Sorry so I can still play Kogla. Mass Vandal doesn't do much. Probably should have untapped Ornithopter to prevent all damage, although Blank usually doesn't deal damage. So now we've got a Kogla to distract them. And then we don't want to play Giruda until we can put it in hand and cast it right away. 
Pinball Drotha could provide a bit of value as soon as we play it. Opponent foretells what is probably Skull Raid. Plays Pilfering Imp. You think too much. So Liliana has a minus seven ultimate. Xenothar seems excellent, can provide card advantage from the top of the opponent's library, so we don't care if we're empty-handed. So Kogla attacks Liliana, opponent chumps, plays Xenothar. Seems fine. And I'll protect the Ornithopter this time. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up, so managed to beat the discard deck by sneaking some powerful 6 drops into play. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Hamza, green-white, plus one counter deck. And what do I think of this opening hand? Creeper as a potential accelerant, although the way our mana works out, we cannot actually play it turn two. So I think this is a mulligan. This is also mulligan, no ramp whatsoever. And this we can try and keep. Probably get rid of Disciple. And hope to go Cold Seal Heart into either Thassa or Panharmonicon, which then make our Chupacabra a lot better. If the opponent cannot remove Chupacabra or Thassa, that's an engine that's very hard to beat for a creature deck. And Field of Rune will keep. Right, so should be able to play our four drop on turn three. Get our double black. Boreal Outrider. Could still play Chupacabra here and then play Thassa next turn, as opposed to waiting on Panharmonicon to maybe delay Hamza. And close between Outrider and Polymbride Druid. I guess we'll kill the Outrider for now. Evolution Sage can add more counters. So now they could send a team. And a pack leader. Curious to see if the Serpent attacks, if they want to trade it, they do. I think I'll take five. And then I can Cobra into Thassa. Flicker Chupacabra. And then might want to kill... Pollen Bright Druid here, since they may not have a land to uh, trigger Evolution Sage anyway. And our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, Chupacabra plus Thassa just too hard for a creature deck to deal with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Valduk, Keeper of the Flame. My hand's missing a two mana accelerant, so I'll take my free mulligan and look for one. Okay, I found my two mana accelerants. I'm missing a second land, however. So do I try and keep this? Seems a tad risky. Need to draw two lands in my first, let's say, three draw steps. And at least one land in my first two. Yeah, I mean, it's close. Smyr's Grasp is quite good at dealing with Valduk. So maybe I'll try it. On the play I would mulligan this, but on the draw. Got an extra chance of picking up a land. Play this on black for Myers Grasp. And then Signet has to do a lot of work too. Rune of Speed giving the short sword haste. Alright, so we're in the game. Liberator can also eventually destroy their equipment. It's another reason why this hand was reasonable, binding another answer to artifacts. Sword of Body and Mind could be quite effective against our deck. If 
found our land, although it does come into play tapped. So, could still play a Liberator and then keep up its ability, as opposed to putting Chiruda in hand when I'm nowhere close to casting it. Valduk resolves. And then for now, probably blow up. I'm gonna go with a short sword, I think. And then Myra's Grasp could deal with Valduk, although that's my entire turn gone. Could Hedron Archive develop my mana or binding, either destroying Valduk or sword. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, binding the sword. And then if I find an untapped land, I could go Archive plus Smatter's Grasp. Opponent did find another equipment. So they're gonna make a 3-1 token here to attack us. Spare Dagger can also be equipped, so... Gonna take 9 damage. But Smatter's Grasp will be a pretty clean answer to Valduk. Sadly, Chasm comes into play tapped, and uh, this one can get another tapped Snowland. Okay, so yeah, I guess the play is just Myers Grasp, and that's it. So not a very mana efficient turn. Royal and Vortex can start ticking down, although we can eventually replay Binding out of the graveyard, thanks to Muldrotha to destroy it. Alrighty, so what's the play here? Can go for Archive, put Giruda in hand, and that's it. It's not bad. Could also play Muldrotha. And that's also my entire turn. Yeah, we'll go with Archive plus uh, Giruda in hand. Could also Panharmonicon, and then I guess next turn we can still go with Giruda and cast it. That sounds more fun. Flame of Kelt could be quite scary on the third chapter. So we do need to make something happen next turn. Tormenting voice goes digging. And a Valakut Awakening can cycle as well. Alright, let's have some fun. Play Giruda. Double trigger. Finding... Probably Hostage Taker. Also double triggers so we can steal both their equipment. And then we still get an extra Giruda trigger here. Which finds either Bookworm or Dream Eater. Kind of like Dream Eater bouncing the Flame of Keld. And I guess Vortex as well because we once again get double triggers. Put all those beautiful cards in the graveyard to get value with Muldrotha. Bounce Flame of Keld. And play a Spare Dagger. Well, that was a pretty good turn. Brought to you by Panaharmonicon. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our Giruda Moldrotha deck in action, and it's been mostly Giruda stealing the show, but that's also the way the deck is built. It's much more built around leveraging Giruda, also because there's not as many options if you do play Giruda as companion in terms of cheap artifacts and enchantments that you can recycle out of the graveyard with Moldrotha. 
cards like maybe the Aether Spellbomb is one that comes to mind as something great you can play it cheaply and also potentially use to protect your commander. So those are the types of cards you would want if Muldrotha is your commander without a companion. But yeah, a lot of ways you can approach the deck and uh, a lot of fun if it all goes according to plan. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.